Welcome to the seventh and final video of the seven steps to FRC Robot Success Series. In this video, we're going to add a parallel loop in the autonomous mode that will slowly move the servo forward and return the servo to its zero position once a limit switch has been closed. As in the step five video of this series, we're going to use the robot framework only and not the game code. For this video, both the servo and the digital input for the limit switch have already been set up in the begin sub BI. Because we are only dealing with the autonomous mode, we'll open up the autonomous independent VI. Once the front panel opens, we'll press Ctrl E to open the code block diagram. As we can see, there is already a fair bit of code here that is set up. The current loop structure is set up as a series of loops. This means that the first loop must finish before the next loop starts. This is not what we want. In order for our new loop to run independently from the existing code, it must not be waiting on any data from another loop. To start, we'll simply scroll down and place a new while loop on the block diagram. Next, we'll get the references for our limit switch and our servo. Both of these functions have been previously set up in the begin sub VI. On the functions palette, Select the WPI Robotics Library, then Actuators, and then Servo, and drag in a registry get function. Next, we'll add a string constant to select the reference we want to get. To match the reference previously created, we'll type Servo. Next, we'll go to the Functions palette, and under WPI Robotics Library, we'll select I.O then digital input, and drag in a registry get function. Now we'll right click on the refnum terminal, select create constant, and then type limit switch to match the reference we created in the begin sub VI. Now we'll put some code in the loop. The first thing we'll do is set up our loop's end condition. Because we want our loop to end once the limit switch is closed, we'll need to obtain a boolean value from our digital input. To do this, we'll go to our functions palette and drag in an input get value function. Next, we'll wire the digital input device reference terminal from the DIO get subVI to the reference output of the registry get subVI. Now, we'll wire the value of our limit switch to the conditional terminal of our while loop. However, as it stands, this condition is not set correctly. Right now, the loop will stop when the limit switch is open. To change this, we can simply right click on the end condition terminal and change the condition from stop if true to continue if true. The next thing we want to do is obtain the current angle from our servo. To do this, go to the functions palette and choose actuators under the WPI robotics library, then servo, and drag in a get angle function. Next, We'll wire this up to the reference output of our servo registry get function. Once we receive our servo angle, we'll want to tell it to increase, so we'll need a set angle function as well. Drag one in from the functions palette, and then wire up the device reference. Now, we'll tell the servo to increase its angle by one degree for every iteration of the while loop. To do this, we must take our previous angle and add one degree to it, and then send the new angle back to the servo. So the next thing we'll do is bring in an add function. Then we'll wire it up to the angle value output from the get angle function. Next, we'll add a numeric constant and set its value to 1. Now we'll wire the resultant angle to the input of the set angle function. To prevent the servo from moving too quickly, we'll add a slight delay. Under timing, we'll bring in a wait function. Next, we'll create a constant and set its value to 50, causing the loop to reiterate every 50 milliseconds. Finally, we want the servo to be set back to its zero position once the loop is ended. To do this, we'll add a set angle servo function to the right and outside of our loop. 
Now we'll wire up the device reference and add a constant with a value of 0. Now, when the loop stops, the servo will move to the zero position. We've now finished our code and our robot's ready to operate. When autonomous mode is selected and enabled, the robot will begin turning right and moving the servo at the same time. The two functions will happen in parallel. In step seven of our seven steps to FRC robot success, we demonstrated how to create a parallel loop in the autonomous code of our robot.